I'm sorry, let's, so I'll let you shift gears. No, let's sorry. shift gears slightly here uh, because uh, I put out a call on Twitter uh, and, uh, you know, what should we talk about today? And it's uh, been on my mind, and some people have taken it a step further. I want to talk about what Eric Holder uh, came out on, uh, I guess it was Monday. I spoke to Glenn Greenwald about this yesterday. Uh, basically asserting or ex- theoretically explaining why the Obama administration feels that they have the right to assassinate American citizens on foreign soil and that uh, the Constitution does not provide, uh, though it provides for due process, it does not uh, necessarily mean judicial review, and sort of ignoring the standard set in that famous Hamdan case as to you may not need to go into a court, but you need an arbiter uh, who is uh, theoretically neutral in this situation. So I got two things from Twitter that basically ask the same question. One is from MPJH. Uh, and one is from David Dixon, uh, Evening Star, who calls into this program quite a bit, asking the same question. Uh, how, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase the two of them, how can you support Obama uh, in light of the fact that he is um, no civil libertarian and arguably asserting uh, powers that are more aggressive and extensive and worse than even George Bush's power grab when it comes to these auspices, uh, under the auspices of, uh, Obama doesn't call it, but the war on terror. This idea that, um, you know, look, if George Bush had asserted what Obama has asserted, the ability to kill an American citizen, um, I, I personally, I wouldn't be able to open up any of my email accounts without it being completely flooded with this, without people running around with their hair on fire. Uh, Republic- actually, your email account, if George Bush could have killed whoever he wanted to, your email account might actually have blown up on you when you opened it up. Uh, honestly. I mean, and, and people are right about this. And then the question is, um, you know, how, how do you support uh, Obama in that context? Um, it, you know, it's a tough argument to make, frankly. Uh, how would you make that argument? Well, I mean, you know, I make the argument with all these things, it, it has to be an overall argument. I have to look at, you know, what line up, what is better and what is worse, that the world, you know, it's not going to be who, the people running for office. I know we all have the, the Jed Bartlett dream from uh, the West Wing, but, you know, the truth is, is that it's never going to be exactly what I want it to be. So I I think people who've heard me on this show and, and in other places I've been know that I've been quite critical of President Obama at times, and I still am on things that I think uh, where he, he didn't do well, and there are a number of them. Um, and this is something I have a problem with. Uh, to me, the bigger problem, I would say, with this issue is just the whole slippery slope we've been going down for about 60 or 70 years now. It's almost like, um, you know, I mean, the prescience of that, that speech that's, that's again and again replayed by Dwight Eisenhower about the military-industrial complex and the dangers is, is, is amazing. I mean, again... You know, I was reading a column about this the other day. I'm trying to think who it was. I think it was Charles Pierce, who's brilliant. Um, and you know, it just it's a remind. You have to you have to put all this stuff together. It's 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 broader than just this one issue. And you have to remind yourself that you, it's when you start down this road. And after World War II, we started down the road of, oh well, you know, we don't need to declare war in Korea. It's it's a UN action. And before you know it, it's not a UN action. It's just you arbitrarily going to war like in Iraq, you know what I mean? And before you know it, and that's the problem with all this stuff, is you need to stop it right when it starts. Because in the ingrained culture, it wants you, it's, that's how culture changes. Is It doesn't change usually in big, huge ways. It's that somebody pushes the envelope a little bit, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. And by the time you're done, you've gotten to where you don't recognize where you began anymore. You know what I mean? And that's my problem here, is that in a way... You know, I don't even know, you know, the truth is is that I'm not even sure how much this changes things. And don't take this the wrong way. I'm not defending uh, Obama. They may not have legally asserted this, and I think he's wrong to make that assertion. There needs to be, obviously, due process, and I'm, I, I'm not sure what that, exactly that due process needs to be. I would think it would be a congressional intelligence uh, committee, you know, as well as others. Potentially, obviously, the judicial system needs to be involved, like what we talked about with the FISA warrants. Um, 
but you know, I, I just have questions in my mind. I'm not sure. Like for example, you know, and maybe you can answer me for me, Sam. Maybe others out there can tweet in answers. But for example, when Bill Clinton took that shot at Obama and uh, Obama, God, terrible, Osama bin Laden, and missed him. Um, you know, when he was in the tent in Afghanistan. Remember what I'm talking about? Yes. And the Republicans all said it was because of the, the Monica Lewinsky thing. Well, okay, that wasn't a U.S. citizen, but he was obviously trying to kill somebody. And the question to me becomes, all right, well, what kind of a case did he have to make back then to do that? You know what I mean? I mean, I think this is a, a, a complicated area. Obviously, if there are terrorists out there, legitimate terrorists who are trying to attack and kill Americans, sometimes decisions need to be made quickly. And the question is, what is the process for that? And I don't know what it is. I certainly think to, to, when you put something in law, that is a terrible thing, because then you're just saying that under any circumstances, uh, a president can arbitrarily just say, I want that person dead. That, and that to even... me, is the biggest problem with this. I am not so naive as to believe that U.S. presidents have not issued uh, and um, uh, ordered the assassination of of at least uh, non-citizens, and frankly, I'm not. Sh- I'm not so sure. I-, I I wouldn't sit here and be so naive as to assume that uh, they haven't uh, killed people like uh, Alaki uh, in the past. But when you codify these things into law, when you codify the notion, when you make an assertion that all that the uh, we need to assassinate an American citizen is uh, essentially a blanket, you know, trust us, we're handling it, is essentially what they're, what they're saying. Uh, right. Because they've That's offered no, uh, they, they won't uh, release the memo from the Office of Legal Counsel, which, uh, which stipulates how they came to this conclusion. It does not comport with any um, uh, uh, case law, as far as I know. And so uh, this is very problematic. Now, in so far as uh, the, the question of how do I continue to support Obama, you know, I, I, again, it's, you know, there is no option. There is no D, none of the above here. You can't do that. Uh, it doesn't exist. It exists in some other fantasy world. But the fact of the matter is, is that the American public needs to speak up more about this. Uh, I can I can still say I am going to vote for the lesser of two evils and why at the same time uh, agitate against this type of authority uh, existing for the president. Because I'm, I'm not just worried about Obama having this authority. I'm worried about future presidents having this authority. And I have no reason to believe that Mitt Romney is going to be any more judicious in this regard than uh, 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 Barack right. Obama. Well, nobody ever gives up power voluntarily. I mean, very few, anyhow. I suppose there have been cases here and there. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you get power like that, which the Constitution was not supposed to provide for you to have, which we we, we purposely knew that giving any executive this much power, my God, the, the talk, everybody, these guys love to the Tea Party or something, love, love to quote the founders. I mean, anybody who's gone back and has studied history and is, you know to see how scared they were in every way of executive power after King George, and to think that we're in this situation, yeah, I mean, that's to me, so I'm glad. I mean, because I think you see it the same way as me, you know. And you know, and I know that that year you did in law school, Sam. That's why I trust your opinion on this. Right, right. It's um, that said legal, the legal. <laughs> yes. I'm just having fun with you. I but, was smart enough. I was smart enough, of course, not to hug any of my professors. So um, uh, well, we're going to find some some stuff from cuts, somewhere at some point. That I'm cuts both you. ways. Uh, on one hand, I didn't become president of the United States. On the other hand, uh, you know, I don't have any of uh, those uh, uh, Breitbart um, uh, parasites uh, coming after me. But you know, the, the, right. on the other hand, you're, you're completely safe from the very logical and intelligent. Uh, um, attacks uh, of Dana Loesch. Yes. So, you know, at least you know you're safe from that because she, she is an intellectual, that one. But somebody, you know, somebody tweeted me and said, personally, I'm doing a Bernie Sanders write in. Why? Why even, why even write in that name? Why, why do any of that? Like, who is it that you're sending a message to? That old lady at the polling booth who's going to be counting this well, if there's even a person counting the ballots? I mean, I mean, what, that's the what, problem. What, obviously, what are you doing? What, I, mean, what I, want, you you know, I would not? want those choices, too. We all would want those choices. But I think in my mind, and obviously in yours, I have to look at what the choices are. You know? And uh, there's one group of guys uh, I've, I, you know, who, who pretty clearly I'm concerned about what Obama's going to do, but they don't even bother to be concerned about what Santorum or Romney would do with Iran. They would bomb it. Right. I mean, pretty clearly. 
So there's not even a reason to be concerned there. You know, don't, I mean, when it comes to, to union rights and other things that Obama hasn't stood up strongly enough on, I'll be the first to say that. But again, in the end, I have to make a decision. And on a few, on some things I care about, again, something that affected the area I'm in in a big way, the auto bailout, what Obama did was fantastic. Mitt Romney would have let it blow up. So I have to, you know, I have to make those comparisons. And then I talk to people uh, like uh, your friend and mine, uh, Mike Papantonio, who certainly knows the legal layout, who, who reminds me that everybody talks about the Supreme Court all the time. But it's not the Supreme Court as much. They don't hear most of the cases. It's the lower federal courts. Right. These guys are stuffing them well, with loons. And with Obama, lunatic. frankly, has done a very horrible job of, he has. Uh, of staffing that. I mean, but, 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 he has. He has but used, you know that you Mitt know, Romney would do a much better job hasn't... with people that we don't like. I mean, yeah, right. And Rick Santorum, that... literally, who would he put on? I mean, that crazy nut from Alabama. What, more? I'm sure that guy would be up for the Supreme Court. I mean, uh-huh. You know, I, 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 it's just you have to think about all that stuff and then decide uh, what are you going to do in the end. And I think that that's, that's the conclusion we've come. doesn't mean I approve of this. And frankly, as you said, codifying this in law, anything like this in law is scary. And, I, you know, I'm glad to see with the, with the, with the NDAA to see uh, Udall and um, I'm trying to think who else it was trying to get that, to get that, that bell unrung, so to speak. You know, and uh, I'm trying to think who the other member was. was. Maybe you know might have been widened, I'm not sure. But they're, they're trying to get that done. So, I mean, you, you try to remedy this, and you try to stop the worst excesses. And then, yeah, I've got a problem with what Obama's done with executive authority in a serious way. It makes it bipartisan. It, it pushes that envelope just a little bit more and makes it culturally acceptable. And, and that's the thing. I just I, – all I was asking the question earlier, I wasn't defending. I was just sort of saying – you know, I do. I am realistic enough to know also that you know there are going to be times where a president you know, is going to have to take action if somebody's planning something somewhere. And I have no problem with what Bill Clinton did trying to take out Bin Laden, quite frankly. And you know, I, I also have no problem. In fact, I'm proud of what Obama did in taking out Bin Laden this time. Yeah. And I think there, you know, and I know some some on the left would disagree with me there, but I, I think I mean, there, I there are times. I'm not I'm not crying for Bin Laden, but I do think it's a shame that we can't have some type of rule of law in this country and bring someone like that to uh, some type of uh, to a courtroom. I mean, you know, uh, particularly if we're if we're so convinced that the guy was uh, worthy of just being shot as he's trying to go to his under wear draw or whatever he was doing in that house, uh, then I think we should be rather confident that we can we can bring him up uh, in front of a, a court and try him uh, on charges. Now, with that said, you know, the, the fact is, is that being an adult and having to make a choice is not always an easy and comfortable thing. You know, when I think about, you know, uh, uh, you need to weigh out, and for some people, uh, the idea of, of civil liberties is the primary focus of uh, is the primary focus of what's going to drive their votes. I mean, you know, for me, um, I think if I saw, uh, if, if I, I don't know what it would be that it would take for me not to uh, vote for Obama. I don't know if it would be something along the lines of cutting Social Security and Medicare or um, a, a series of other things, um, but... It is. It, it, maybe it would maybe be rounding real, us up and real, sending us into FEMA camps. Might be it. Um, I, I'm not sure where that line is. Um, and but you know, it's also it's it's a similar situation to you know in my mind at this point in terms of uh, people are calling for an intervention in Syria, and you know it, the, there are some things where I think that you simply look in what 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 you have in your quiver. And you say, I may not have the arrows to address this. In other words, I don't think there is a solution to the problem of Syria from an American perspective. I, don't, I, I think it's one of those things where you just have to yeah. watch and see something horrible happen. I, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't, don't know that there's always an answer. And to a certain extent, uh, I don't know that there's an answer uh, for a, a genuine uh, leftist or a uh, progressive and, or a liberal. And, you know, maybe the answer is in what are those, uh, what you identify yourself as in that, uh, in terms of uh, what you do about Obama. We, I don't think that we have, sadly, the electoral leverage in this situation to do anything about it. And uh, it, the electoral leverage would have been with a primary. It would right. be if we had a, a system that allowed more than two parties. It would be if there still, like there used to be, was a reasonable Republican Party. I mean, you could have sat there in 1976 and you could have chosen between Jimmy Carter and Gerald Ford, 
And they both were reasonable guys on a number of issues, and you would have decided, well, Ford pardoned Nixon, and that was terrible, which I do think it was. So I want to vote for Carter, or Carter is, is more of a Christian fundamentalist, which he was back then, and Ford seems like he's, you know, Ford came out in favor of the Equal Rights Amendment. Maybe yeah. I want to vote for Ford. You used to have those options, um, but now we don't. We've got one party as a, a party of insane people, and we know that. And so, you know, when you think about that, you think that there was no primary. I mean, there are a number of ways that could have been done. Then that what you need to do is you need to have a, na- a national movement like there has been on certain issues, gay rights, which has has I think helped helped push the president forward on that. Um, other things that have happened to stop PIPA and SOPA and all these crazy things. Um, and need, Occupy. You, that you know, the, I mean, that's the thing is that you know sometimes right, the answers don't lie in electoral politics. And that's uh, exactly you, right. And I think this is one of those answers. I think there needs right. to be a national movement of people fighting for civil liberties, whether it's NDAA, whether it's the president being able to to codify the law, killing people. Uh, you know, we need to make and and that kind of stuff needs to be clear. Because as I tried to say on this show, you know, I I I have strong opinions on stuff, but sometimes I'm even a little you know torn on things. Whereas codified in law, no. There needs to be some due process with the congressional committee, absolutely, you know, as well as judicial review of of these of these actions. But I do also understand that there are going to be times in the world we live in where a president's going to have to, for lack of a better word, word you know, lob some some bombs in somewhere. Yes. It's terrible, but I, I I do understand that, and I don't like it. And um, but I you know I, I don't think it's always it's always clear. What is clear to me is. Absolutely, you can't codify that in law. Absolutely, you can't not release documents and not share them with people. Absolutely, that stuff is wrong. That I do know. 